Hi, everyone. I'm Debbie Roberts, owner and financial advisor at Property Apprentice. Join us today for the Week in Review, where I'll talk about current events for the everyday investor and home buyer. Our topics for this week, first up from News Hub on the 2nd of May, almost 20,000 homeowners falling behind on mortgage payments. Second topic from Good Returns on the 2nd of May, snail's pace for new listings. Third topic from landlords.co.nz on the 1st of May, work from home lifts rent in outer suburbs. Fourth topic from News Hub on the 1st of May, cost of living. Amounts Kiwis are borrowing to buy a house drops amid tumbling prices. And fifth topic for this week in review from Stuff on the 3rd of May, here's why strong employment data could be bad for home loan borrowers. First up this week in review from News Hub on the 2nd of May, almost 20,000 homeowners falling behind on mortgage payments. Credit Bureau Centrix released data showing that mortgage arrears climbed for the eighth consecutive month in March. With 19,300 accounts past due, the number of households behind on mortgage payments has increased by 26% since the same time last year. Consumer arrears now account for 11.8%, of the credit active population, or approximately 427,000 people. Mortgage repayments were typically the top priority for borrowers, according to Managing Director Keith McLaughlin, and the high level of arrears demonstrated the impact of high interest rates and inflation. He said it was concerning how a number of mortgages were going into arrears. New mortgage lending fell as sales volumes continued to slump, reduced lending by almost 48% year on year. Car loan arrears increased 3.6% year-on-year, according to McLaughlin. He anticipates that more people will be in arrears in the coming months. However, as the summer months approach, there might be more stability and interest rates and consumer confidence might improve. Now, in my opinion, part of the reason for people falling into arrears is that if you purchased a property within the last couple of years, um, there's a chance that you might have been tested at interest rates that are lower than what we've currently got at the moment. So, you know, it can really stretch people's financial positions in times like this. It might be helpful to know that most economists are, are anticipating the fact that we're already at or near the peak of the interest rate cycle. If you're coming off a fixed interest rate at some stage within the next six months, please get in touch with a mortgage advisor as soon as possible so you can put a plan in place to help you help you manage those increased mortgage payments. So if you haven't got a good mortgage advisor that you already work with, feel free to get in touch with Jean at my team. You can contact him through office at myteam.co.nz. Just remember my team is spelled M-I for mortgages and insurance. So miteam.co.nz. He'll be happy to help. Second to topic for this week in review on the 2nd of May. Snails pace for new listings. Data from realestate.co.nz revealed that new house listings last month were down 18.9% nationally, while stock remained up in almost all regions compared to April last year. According to Vanessa Williams, when new listings fall but the decrease isn't reflected in total stock numbers, it means buyers are taking their time. She explained that credit conditions are tight for buyers and interest rates remain uncertain. Buyers are delaying their buying decisions because of the economic climate. REINZ, or Ryan's data from the month of March, supports this, with, with the days to sell increasing to 45 days, which is nine days longer than in March last year. Williams said buyers and sellers have more time to negotiate in the current market. Last month, there were 28,643 homes for sale across the country. Advertised prices have surpassed auctions as the most popular listing type. Only 19.2% of residential dwellings on realestate.co.nz were listed as auctions last month. Two years ago, when the market peaked, auctions made up 34.8% of all listings. She said in a slow market, vendors usually choose a sales method that's less time pressured. New listings are at their lowest levels for any April on record last month and new listings decreased year-on-year year in all regions. Coromandel was an exception, as it recorded a 9.8% increase. There were nine regions that had more than a 20% fall in the number of listings compared to April last year. Looking back at every April since 2007, new listings have been at an all-time low nationally, with only Nelson, Coromandel, and Central North Island failing to break the record. 
William said that many owners are putting off listing their properties for sale because they're waiting to see what happens with interest rates. The largest year-on-year drop in new listings were in Gisborne, down 42.3%, Wellington, down 35.5%, and Bay of Plenty, down 33.2%. Last month, average asking prices were down almost everywhere compared to April of last year. The national average asking price is now nearly $100,000 lower than it was a year ago, and average asking prices in Auckland, Gisborne, Waikato, Wairarapa and Wellington are more than $150,000 than where they were at the same time last year. Over the pandemic, people poured their travel spending into the property market, and William believes that with the borders reopening, what's happening now is an overcorrection towards something resembling normal. If you'd like to learn more about investing in property, join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing in 2023. I'll discuss strategies for successful investing from my perspective as a financial advisor, and these training sessions are available free online or in person, and I run them as live events. Check out propertyapprentice.co.nz for upcoming dates and register today. We don't sell property, so it's all about increasing your knowledge to reduce your risk. And if you'd like to find out more about how we can help you to reach your financial goals, you can either attend one of these free events, because I also talk about this towards the end of the session, or you can book a no obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, via the website as well. That's propertyapprentice.co.nz. Third topic for this week in review from on the 1st of May, work from home lifts rents in outer suburbs. There are signs showing that working from home has an effect on the urban rental market structure. According to an Auckland rental gradient analysis conducted by Auckland University Business School, academics William Chung and Edward Yu, in collaboration with Daniel Wong of the Tamaki Regeneration Company, after the pandemic and the resulting shift toward working from home, rents went up higher in Auckland's lower density city fringe suburbs compared to the city centre. The study, published in the International Journal of Housing Markets and Analysis, examined this trend using rental listings data from 242 Auckland suburbs from January 2013 to December 2021, as well as micro-level household data from Statistics New Zealand. A rental gradient analysis was done by the researchers to contrast rental prices pre- and post-COVID. They found that the difference in rental prices between the city centre and suburbs further out gets considerably smaller after 2021. Chung's evaluation was that suburbs further away may have become more attractive places to live because many businesses introduced flexible working arrangements due to COVID-19. This in turn pushed rents up. He added that it's often the city centre that's supposed to be the most expensive section of the city, but because many people have the freedom to work remotely, more workers are deciding to live in the city fringe areas. Chung also concludes that working remotely is reshaping the urban rental structure by creating more demand for rentals in city fringe suburbs. He suggested that instead of resisting the change, companies should improve their remote work policies and capabilities. The scholars believe that this shift has implications on policy and urban planning. They recommend that policymakers listen to the changing preferences of people who work from home when it comes to making decisions about housing and transportation. In my opinion, I think transportation is a key part of of this and the reason why people are working from home a bit more because, you know, in a cost of living crisis, petrol is one of the expenses that you can reduce by working at home. And if your employers are open to the idea of doing that, it can save a considerable amount of money, especially if you don't live close to where you work. Fourth topic this week in review from News Hub on the 1st of May, cost of living, amount Kiwis are borrowing to buy a house drops amid tumbling prices. New home loan values fell 18.9% in the six months to December, according to data released on Monday by the New Zealand Banking Association. The drop comes as borrowers face rapidly rising interest rates and falling home prices. NZBA Chief Executive Roger Beaumont said that the decrease is good news at a time when many households are struggling with strong inflation and a higher cost of living. The average loan amount for new home loans is now $338,598, which Beaumont attributes to falling house prices. This also reflects the property market, 
which saw residential property values across New Zealand decrease on average by 7.2% in the year to February. Beaumont stated that while the Reserve Bank is rising is raising the cost of borrowing to fight inflation, people are starting to borrow less. The average loan value of nearly 1.26 million home loans across 1.09 million customers is $316,019. According to the data, 26.1% of the 45,628 new home loans issued were to first-home buyers. Welcome back to the market. <laughs> the data also shows many Kiwi households took advantage of slow interest rate or low interest rate, sorry, and paid more than they needed, which somewhat insulated them from recent official cash rate rises. He stated that only a small number switched to interest-only repayments during that time period. There were only 12,120 home loans that switched from principal and interest to interest-only repayments. This is less than 1% of the total number of home loans. There's also been a drop of around 10% in home loans on variable interest rates, which suggests that borrowers are looking for more certainty. It's also important to point out that floating interest rates or variable interest rates are at much higher rates than current fixed rates. It comes as the country struggles with persistently high inflation of 6.7%, which is slightly lower than the peak of 7.3% in the June 22 quarter, but still much higher than the Reserve Bank feels comfortable with. Inflationary pressures prompted the Reserve Bank of New Zealand to raise the OCR from 0.25 in August 2021 to 5.25 this April. The average house price has fallen from a high of 1.063 million in January 22 to 907,737 in March of this year as a result. So, you know, if you're a first home buyer, it literally can't get much better than this. You know, we're potentially at peak of the property cycle with, with regards to interest rates. And if we're not already at the bottom of the property cycle, as far as house prices go, we're pretty close. So, you know, I think that the next six months are going to be particularly interesting. And if you're in a position that you can get lending, don't sit on the sidelines because otherwise you'll be competing with a lot more buyers who are ready to take action. Now, if you or someone that you know is looking at purchasing your, your first home, get in touch with a mortgage advisor like Jean at my team, for example, and, you know, get a pre-approval in place. But don't waste that pre-approval. Lending criteria has relaxed a little bit since yesterday, which was when the triple CFA amendments to the amendments to the amendments to the amendments were rolled out. So lending has got a little bit more relaxed, although they are still testing your affordability at interest rates of up to 9%. So get in touch with a mortgage advisor, find out how much you can borrow and take advantage of the fact that these are the cheapest house prices that we've seen in a long time. And yes, interest rates are high, but if you lock in an interest rate for the next 12 months or so, it's not likely to get higher than where we're at now. And then when interest rates start dropping, you'll reap the rewards of owning your own home and paying off a cheaper interest rate. So get some good advice from a mortgage advisor like Gene Andrews from my team. Get in touch with him by emailing office at myteam.co.nz. Last but not least, this week in review from Stuff on the 3rd of May, here's why strong employment data could be bad for home loan borrowers. Man, we get one bit of good news and then we get smacked with another bit of bad news. It's normal for this stage in the property cycle, so don't freak out. Economists believe that stronger than expected employment figures may lead to higher interest rates, but the government's budget, which will be revealed this month, may be a deciding factor. Stats New Zealand reported on Wednesday that the official unemployment rate remained at 3.4% in the three months to the end of March. The strength of the labour market data aligns with pay rates. Stats New Zealand reported that average annual ordinary time earnings increased 7.6% in the March quarter, up from 7.2% in the previous quarter. Infometrics chief forecaster Gareth Kennan said that because of this, he's now more confident that there will be two more OCR increases as the Reserve Bank battles to get inflation under control. This would take the rate to 5.75%. Q3 
Capital Economics said in an update that the result posed a risk to its forecast that the Reserve Bank would raise rates by another 25 basis points this month and that the increase could be larger. According to the report, the Reserve Bank is likely to be concerned that employment has risen above its maximum sustainable level. ASB senior economist Chris Tennant-Brown said unemployment figures reinforced his view that there was one more OCR increase to come. He added that there was still a bit upward pressure on short-term rates. Longer-term interest rates will be influenced by everything that's going on internationally. He observed that longer-term fixes have come down by almost 1% point from their peak, and in recent weeks, banks have cut their longer-term rates. For ANZ senior economist Miles Workman, the budget would be a key indicator. He explained that the labour market data will not cause a major shift. The upcoming budget, however, will show where further fiscal stimulus may end up, resulting in additional inflationary pressures and therefore more pressure on interest rates. So my thoughts on this are no one's got a crystal ball and the Reserve Bank makes their decision at the last possible moment when they make a decision about increasing the OCR or not. My opinion is that yet we've still got half of the fixed mortgages in New Zealand coming off their fixed rates this year, before the end of this year. So the Reserve Bank is going to be taking that into account as well. You know, so a lot of people have been on lower interest rates. The pain for them with refixing at a higher interest rate is still to come. And that's going to have a significant impact on spending, which is going to bring the inflation rate down further. So I think the Reserve Bank will take that into account. I fully expect there to be another increase by 25 basis point in the next OCR announcement. But I'd be surprised if they increased it by 0.5%. 5.5% uh, OCR was their long-term target. And so far, they've, they've stuck to that. So I'd be surprised if they went higher than that. I wouldn't be surprised if they sit quietly. So instead of increasing, if they just keep it unchanged, although I think it's a higher chance that they'll increase it by 0.25 or 25 basis points and then potentially sit it out in the next OCR announcement. But time will tell. We shall see who's right and who's been guessing. <laughs> so something else that I wanted to comment on is that with the interest rates increasing, uh, especially with the short-term interest rate increasing and the longer-term interest rates decreasing, don't fall for it with your bank. Because what they're trying to do, in my opinion, is they're trying to stop people from refinancing to other lenders. Now, some of the refinancing options that are available are really attractive, you know, like 1% cashback deals on the size of your mortgage up to a maximum of $20,000. And some lenders are covering your legal costs in that refinancing as well. So if you're coming up for a fixed rate review, get in touch with your mortgage advisor. Don't talk directly to the bank because this might be the perfect time for you to refinance to another lender lock in a short-term interest rate so that you're in a position where you can take advantage of the rates when they do start dropping again, and then, yeah, get that lump sum cash back so that you can reduce your mortgage boom, just like that. You can't wait on the sidelines forever. And data is suggesting that house prices are bottoming out. We're seeing green shoots in the property market. Opportunities at this stage in the cycle might not be here for much longer. Act now. Make the choice to reach your financial goals. And join me at one of our upcoming events called How to Succeed with Property Investing in 2023. My tips as a financial advisor regarding strategies for successful investing are designed to help reduce the risk at this stage in the market and give you confidence moving forward. Now, if you're a client of Property Apprentice, this is a good time to have a chat with your coach, have a chat with your, with your mortgage advisor, get back in touch with me if it's time for me to review your financial plans. And, you know, let's make this next six months absolutely hum for you. So our free training sessions for people who aren't clients, they're held either online or in our Auckland office in Ellerslie, Auckland. Plenty of opportunity to ask me questions at those. I'll answer as many of them as possible. Register at our website, propertyapprentice.co.nz and check out the details there. Now, if you've got suggestions for future podcasts, please feel free to let us know. Email office at propertyapprentice.co.nz and we'll put you on the list.
put your ideas on the list. So let me know, what, you, what do you want me to talk about at some of these podcast sessions? So we'll continue doing the week in review because we've had lots of good feedback about these, but also keen to hear what you want to hear more about. Okay, so let us know. If you want to have a no obligation chat with my husband, Paul, about the coaching program and the financial advice that we provide at Property Apprentice, remembering we have no conflict of interest because we don't sell properties. So you can book a meeting or a phone call with him via our website as well. That's propertyapprentice.co.nz. I look forward to seeing you soon.